Hello, this is Blair Stanislao with the Happy Lion Center. Welcome to our podcast, Mystical and Infamous, where we have playful and easy conversations about anything mystical, getting to the heart of all things strange and weird. Join us in a bit of magical tomfoolery, spreading the alchemy of love and light. And now, we invite you to enjoy the show. The way that I work has really shifted. Um, And it's very accelerated and very intense and very much has to go, has to do with like going inside. So of course, when this happens and then I try it on clients, they kind of, it's like a shock, right? Because we changed from um, kind of doing like the gentler stuff to like, we're going, like we're going at it now, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Is the best way I can describe it. So, um, so, you know, some of my clients, they're like, they've been struggling. And so of course I have some, not struggling, but like a lot of heightened senses, like our emotions, I mean, Mm -hmm. so I, I, you know, so then you start, like, you start asking questions. Well, finally I got an answer to that, um, which came in this morning (laughs) during my hard hour sleep was that, um, you know, a lot of times when we, you know, we talk about going in and healing, right. Which is absolutely what we want to do. But even other healers that I like that I've worked with are like, okay, we're going to go inside and heal, but let's expand out first and then go back in. And by no means am I saying any of this is wrong about doing that because I, I mean, I understand it. We're going to expand out so we can get an objective view. So it's almost like we can kind of go in and heal it on a gentler level. Right. So sometimes what I find close, what's that? So it's not so close, intense. Right. So, but one of the, I guess one of the questions that I've had is that, well, we do that, but then they sometimes come back and we're, we're, we're dealing on like kind of with on the same vibration. Right. So it's kind of like, it's momentarily it's bliss, right. We went in and healed it, but then we come back and we're all like, well, you know, I'm still kind of struggling with whatever A, B and C was. Right. So, um, so interestingly enough, you know, I don't know about you, but whenever you get like a download, you try it all out on your friends first (laughs) to see what happens, right? (laughs) How they react. Well, it's so interesting because even they have commented, they're like, wow, this is really intense. This is really hard. But so far, like in the last, like in the last month, you know, I've been following up. How do you feel? And they're like, they're like, I don't even remember what it was that I was having the problem with and whatever, and whatever was blocking them with moving forward has been, is like free and clear. So, so it's clearing it out better. Yes. Yes. So here, so here's the information I, I needed to kind of, I needed to kind of give you that a little bit. Hang on so a second. I was yeah, like, you were breaking up. I think it might be my internet. Okay. Uh, let me. It, or it could be mine. Okay, we'll just try it again. So I, I didn't hear. Yeah, we just said now your face is moving, so that's good. Hopefully, that's better. Okay. Oh, <laughs> good. 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 Um. So I, so I was asking, like, what, like, what is the difference between what, what was before and what was now? And so I got, like, I really got this really clear vision and channeled information that it's about when we choose to start inside first. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's intense. But now we're really involving our soul, which is what our soul came here to do, right? And we're asking for the comfort, like the, like the support and the security of the soul. Well, when the soul is experiencing stuff, which is why it gets so intense, right? It's because it experiences it on a, like a a whole nother level. Like it doesn't have the human part in it. If that makes sense. Are you following me? Yes. I think keep talking. Okay. So when we, when we go inside first, we have the luxury of yes, having the soul be able to like uh, the soul being able to go up, right. To go up and expand and bring in information. Well, what happens is, is that yes, a lot of times we want to take a step back. So we're not experiencing it so much, but sometimes it's in that, from what I can see that it's in that, um, not, not really like experiencing it that much that, that there's like a disconnect. 
Like, it's almost like we're not either lighting, lighting up the, like all and activating all the light codes that need to go with that to heal. So even doing, so even trying it on myself, right. is like, woo. I can tell you, like, I'm not like an angry person or like I get frustrated or ir- like irritated or agitated, but like it heightened it. But it was during that moment that I was really able to like take that energy that's, that's not, it's almost like it's not bald. Like it's, it's, how do I describe it? Like, it's so like, it heightens it to the fact, to the point where you can really work with it to transmute it. Uh If that makes sense. And then, and then it's just, and then as each, each time that you transmute something, you get like, it's interesting because like the clarity and the healing also hits you more intense. So what I mean by that is that having that emotion portion into it, what's that you're pulling that emotion portion, which makes everything so much more intensified. You're, you're drawing the attention to that. I mean, that that's what expedites everything, right? So yes, you're drawing attention to that and it's making it clearer what to do with it. So yeah, it's yes. more intense. So, you know, and a lot of times when we, like when we talk about going inside and I'm going, I'm going to go back to go, I think we've talked about this before, like being able to push away the conscious mind and allow the subconscious to come forward, right? Because mm-hmm. the subconscious has all of that information it's the one that processes everything for us when we talk about patterns to find positive resources and to get rid of the unhealthy resources. Well, the intensity of it allows the subconscious to really work through that. Again, it's almost like the more heightened it it becomes, not saying like it's through the roof and is going to like, you know, you know, even like eventually like lead to a heart attack or something. Like I don't want people to think it's that way, but it's almost like that energy that's in there is easier to move through because when we expand out right away, it's like, we kind of put that block in, in there. I'm trying to explain this the best that I can with how I was being shown, but I was like, Oh, I got it. (laughs) So once we go through all of that, right. And I'm going to say, and we have that aha moment, maybe that bliss and that like intensified happy moment of now I don't have, I, now I don't have this, like this hurt. Now I've processed through it. I have a new resource, whether I know what it is or not, right? It's going to be a new resource that the pro, that your subconscious is going to play. Then what I was showed is then the next thing is, is then we want to take all of that energy, right? All of that really strong intensified energy. Then we want to expand out. Oh, I like that. And what, and we use that, right. To really help us like really expand out to get that clear objective view, because it's during that clear objective view, right. Where we really can have compassion and really have forgiveness or whatever it is that we're needing. And then really seeing the lesson for what it is and, and seeing the lesson without I, and I'm going to say like without questioning it, because sometimes when we go out and then we look at it, you still kind of have some questions, right? About like, or maybe there's doubt, like maybe like, I think I can be compassionate about that or co- have compassion towards that person. Well, when you take all of that tr- energy that is now transmuted, clear, clean, no, nothing, no entanglements, no knots in it, and we pull it out, even when you pull out, the feeling of compassion is stronger. Because you transmuted before you did that is what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and so you're using all of that, all of that really, I, I'm like that really cool energy to pull out, right? So a lot of times when people want to heal, and this is the other thing I know, like they talk about like, well, here's where I'm at. And you ask, well, where is it that you want to be at? They kind of tell you, well, here, I'm here at point A. Really, this is really want what I want at point B, right? Mm-hmm. But you can see that it's almost like because there's so like there there's so much nodding and entanglement in there, they don't really clearly see what point B is. They know consciously what they want, right? But maybe not a hundred percent see it. Mm-hmm. So then, when we expand out and we have another aha, this is the lesson moment. You can stay in that energy and then, you know, with intent or whatever you, however you want to refer to it, then let's go back to where you want to be at point B. 
what's happening? What do you see now that we've really cleared all of that out? Okay. So then my question is, what does it mean to go in first? Because the way you're describing it, it sounds to me like, um, I mean, to me, it just sounds like you're kind of, in a sense, kind of pointing out what we do. And it, as I go through the, the, um, I go through the experience of learning to do the energy work. I see that people are doing certain things for, <clears throat> excuse me, for protection, right? So it's almost like they're, we are deliberately pulling them out, like you said, because if it's too intense, the person can't handle it. I mean, I had a hypnosis, I think two weeks ago, and this person had, uh, well, he, this person was really sensitive to energy period. Like he, he was in, he told me a story about being in Walmart and he had this, like this, this icky feeling come over him, but also words like specific words. And they were words that he would never say Now he's, he is very in tune, but he's not, he's not had conversation with people to say, to have someone say, you got that from somebody else. But luckily he's got a girlfriend that he was there with. And he just was like, kind of trying to protect himself and so they were finishing at the checkout. He felt the sensation and all he could think of is, I don't want to get out of here. So they got out of there. They went into the car. And of course he has this release because it doesn't feel right to him. Right. Mm -hmm. And she's open enough that she listened to what he said. And she said, I know exactly what it was. It was a guy and he was going around like he was mad. Right. And he was basically, he wasn't, um, I don't think it was racial slurs, but it was like slurs against people who were overweight or something. And that's not what this guy would ever do. Right. So anyway, she knew that she was observant of what was going on. And whereas he was just feeling it um, anyways, and he had a hypnosis session with me. That's when he told me the story. And I have to tell you that when he was like way deep, but as deep as we go, um, he was having such a reaction that I actually thought to myself, Hmm, maybe I need to like really be more cognizant about, do I need to be watching for specific signals? Like you said, about having a heart attack. I mean, he was like breathing heavy and just like shaking. Yeah, like a major uh, ab ab reaction to it. Yeah. So here's here. So here's the, I, I guess if, if this is what you're asking, like, here's the difference, right? So we can go in and I feel, and I'm going to like, like, we can't like, honestly, we, we cannot control how somebody else is going to react, mm -hmm. but we, as the, as the healer, we do have, a, I'm going to say a very special job of being a hundred percent there for them, a hundred percent helping them feel safe. So yeah. if it is something that like, if like what you're explaining, like that really like, like heavy and hard ab reaction. Mm -hmm. What we can do, right, is we can we can do all the necessary steps to keep them safe. We can help bring them back out safely, right. make and then you know, and then have a conversation about it to bring it to like to their awareness, right? Yeah, which we which I did, right? He yeah, he was fine. It wasn't it it didn't turn into a thing, but I just haven't had one be quite that intense. Mm -hmm. But I I get the impression that a, a large part of um, the training that's out there for energy work they're doing that protection in a sense to kind of skip over that part, you know? Yes. I don't have to experience that. And I, and I do so, and I, I like, by no means am I saying like, that's wrong to do that yeah. because you know, there's yeah. so many ways to heal and there's so many ways that really help other people. Like I, I, so when I talk about this, I really feel it's for, um, it's for people that like are really like, um, like healing seekers. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Sorry, they're, that's so they're ready to do the hard work. Yeah. That understand yeah. that. Oh my God. Like if this is happening, this is this, like, this is a big process, but yeah. I, but I'm okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, oh my gosh, I think I forgot what your question was, but well, Michael, gonna... all I was saying was, it seems like the, the, what it sounds to me like you're saying is the, the download that you're getting is it's showing you that the protective measures, the pulling out away from whether it was like at the time that the person under hypnosis was having this intense reaction, or if it's at the beginning of it, where you set up your protection or you're, you're trying to pull out from the situation and see it from a grander perspective. What I understand you're saying is that it's the download is telling you that it's actually more complete 
to not pull out of it, but to go into it and feel it and experience it and then work with that energy and transmute it. And then you come out of it. So you have the trans transmutation and then you, because we're bringing it towards lighter, or higher vibration, right? Mm-hmm. It's a better experience, which is amplified by the emotions mm-hmm. or the, whatever kind of the energy and energy of emotions. Right. And then you expand that and it's, it's uh it's just a more complete healing is what it sounds like it might be. Yes. Okay. You got it. Okay. <laughs> you, you got it. You totally got it. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and, and, you know, I'm going to go back to like, we can't, we can't control like, like I can't control how my client's going to react again. I can keep them safe, right. but here, because I have the same question about, well, what if they have an ab reaction, right? <laughs> because even when you're working with them, we're going, we're, we're moving from conscious to unconscious right. moments. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was one of my questions. Cause you know, God forbid, like no offense, like I don't want to experience what you experience. <laughs> I've been with people where they've had ab reactions, but not, you know, not like, you know, that, that immediate shock. And you're kind of sitting there going, okay, like, what do I do? Right. Yeah. But, um, but I think the beautiful thing about it is because we do ask in, for a lot of protection. The mm-hmm. thing is, is that what we're getting involved in right away is our soul. Like our soul wants to keep us safe. It is not here to harm us. It's not here to, you know, to destroy us, make it, you know, to, to do anything that's negative to us. And sometimes I feel what it is and is that when we kind of expand out, we forget that we have this beautiful protection inside of us. And when we go to that first and just, you know, and we're just like, Hey, I want, like, I want to work with you on this, right? Like we're a team, we're a partnership, mm-hmm. you know, the human side and then the soul side of me, right? We're a partnership. So let's work on this together. It's almost like, I feel like the soul is like, like, it's almost like, well, finally, yes. Uh, and just kind of yeah. wraps its arms around you and allows you to feel the intensity of the emotion, Right allows you to go through it, but at the same time is keeping you, is keeping you so safe. If that makes sense. Because- it does, but I think it, I, I want to make sure that we clarify for anybody who's listening, who hasn't experienced this stuff. That's the, um, I will say coming from, um, a Christian community. And I don't mean like we weren't in a, you know, a sect or anything. I was just in the Southeast. Like it's just there all over. Right. And coming from that, I found the greatest solace in the, the phrase that they would use would be, God doesn't give you anything you can't handle. Okay. Right. The way I would translate that is who's got your back and the person who's got your, or the, whatever, the energy that's got your back is the, is the energy that would, like you said, is literally never going to do anything and that is going to harm you. Like, and it's way smarter than the human form. So you don't have to worry about it making a mistake. It just works out. Like the source energy has a plan and it's the one thing that you can rely on more than you can rely on anything else, anywhere else. So there's really no, for me, there is no fear going into it. I mean, that could be really scary, right? Like doing yeah. that could be really scary, but I don't really have fear because I, I know that so fully and through my bones that I'm not worried about it because I know that it's like, I just, I don't know. I just know that this is whatever it is I'm working on, however it is I'm working, I'm ready to do it because I'm there. I didn't make a mistake. You know, there's all these things going into play. It's not like, it's not like you, you know, bump your toe and you know, that's not what the healing's like. The healing's like, I, I read about this person. I watched them on YouTube. I called, I, you know, we called, we made an appointment. We had to reschedule. Like there's all these things that go into it that you can't tell me that there's not this magical dynamic that essentially is confirming its protection for you. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm like, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just, it, it's, it's like undeniable. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like that's, I feel like that's even why, like when you come out on the other end of this, that, and I I don't want to say that when you come in, like your issue is insignificant, 
but you've worked through all of that to the point where it's no longer, it's no longer an issue. It's no longer a pain point. Right. Mm -hmm. And so why, like, why would you remember what it was? Do you know what I mean? Not saying that you're like, I don't remember anything about it, but what I'm saying is what you're not remembering is the, like, is that pain point that it kept pushing on. Right. Right. So, so, because we, cause you know, we have experiences, our experiences don't go away, good or bad. They don't go away, but we can also go, go like, if, if we have this, if we have this chain of events, that's just, that's reacting one after the other, after the other, from the original experience, let's go in and let's really go like, oh, Suri's trying to talk to me, <laughs> but let's go let, you know, and you may not even know what, like what experience you're unnodding, but let's take, like, let's move that energy instead of that energy being, you know, being a pain point. And then it hits the next, you know, the next experience, pain point, pain point, pain point. And then it becomes, so it becomes this kind of like this really uncomfortable circle, right. Of just replaying, Mm -hmm. let's go in and not all of that so that the circle no longer exists maybe the experiences of now are no longer chained together and now all, that's all it is so even for for example you know i've been i've been undoing years of stuff with my mom mm-hmm. like years of stuff with my mom right yeah. but you know now like when i go in and like yes like i'm going to go in and i'm going to go in deep and i'm going to do this when i get to the other side when i look at whatever that bubble of that experience that was in there that was so painful to me I truly see it from a different lens and I kind of looking at it going, huh? So what, so what really was the pain? Does that make sense? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So what do you find when you do that? You know what? I like, I found this on the web. I don't know. Suri keeps trying to talk. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Um, You know, honestly, what like, and you know, what I find is like, I really do find forgiveness. Like, um, at, like I can tell you like years, people will be like, well, you know, you got to forgive your mom. And I'm like, uh-huh. Forgive my mom. Yep. And I'm like, <laughs> I turn and they turn around them all, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it, but it's interesting because, um, you know, I still have more knots to like bubbles that I need to untie. But when I look at it, like, I really, like, I can really genuinely feel that forgiveness. Like I can feel that forgiveness in every cell of my body to know that like, she, she's just, you know, she's just doing her thing too. And just trying to make it through. And yes, I play, she played that role in my life. I had to play that role in her life for that to happen. But like, I can't, like, I can't describe, like, it's so hard to describe it unless you feel it, but like, sorry, I'm really trying not to tear up because, um, but like, you know, I could say, I could have said before, if I saw my mom walking down the street, I absolutely would turn and go the other way and act like I never saw her. Like she never existed. That would not be today. It doesn't mean that I'm going to have this close relationship with her, this close loving relationship, but the best way I can describe it is that I truly see her now without all this, you know, without anger, like, you know, anger or, or, you know, the moments that she just made me feel so worthless, you know, like, and devalued, like all these things that have been piled up in front, it's all gone. And just, I really, like, I, I really, I see her soul. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it sounds like what you're describing is kind of, uh, compassion, but it's not, it's not like it's just for her. It's also for you. It sounds like you're what, what I correct me if I'm wrong is, but it's, it sounds like you're describing the heat, doing this healing process this way, untying those knots helps you to be able to see the roles in which we play and have compassion for those things. Yes. And, and when you say those people or yeah. And when you yeah. say roles, like they're real roles, because I feel like these, you know, when like, again, I'm going to kind of go back when we expand out and we look at it and we're like, well, you know, the role they're supposed to play is to like, help me find my self-worth. Right. Mm-hmm. But now when I say, 
the role that she like helped me play was to find my self-worth. I'm really talking about the authenticity of that. Like, mm-hmm. it's almost like even the energy behind the way that it was, that it said is completely different. So it's like, we're not, it's, it's almost like we're not even, and uh, this is going to probably sound really bad, but you know, when we say things like, oh, I really do understand the role that they played. Right. Mm-hmm. I almost feel like that's what we've been told we have to, to feel when we do that versus really genuinely and rawly feeling that like we feel that at the rawest level where we can sit back and go I really do see this role and I feel like there oh I'm getting chills right now I feel like there is like a sense of gratitude to that Mm -hmm. because again when you make it out on the other end of that and you really like have done that um I'm cautious to say permanent healing but it but it feels like that like you really do see that role and that, you know, and then, and then you're like, thank you for making me know that I am worth everything. Right. Yeah. So then what happens in exchange? Right. And for that, I really do have forgiveness Mm -hmm. for how I felt or experienced that situation for Mm -hmm. you and for me. You know, I'd be interested to kind of even like experience this because I, I'm just making a quick connection with me for my sister. I have an older sister and she has been a lot of grief for me, but I did, I mean, like I even actually said when I was in college and everybody would be talking about how they miss their family and all that. And I'd be like, uh, you know, going to school with their sibling. And I actually said several times, if I went to school with my sister, I would literally major in whatever is across campus. (laughs) So uh, so I understand where you're coming from, but as I've been doing more of this stuff, and frankly, when she comes up in my healing stuff, it's, it's annoying to me at first. Cause I'm like, when is it ever going to stop? You know, (laughs) (laughs) but I had a session with somebody where there was a door opened that allowed me and all I had to do was like play with in the subconscious state, right? Play with the ideas of her potentially being a different, it being a different experience for me. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when I did that, boy, yeah. Floodgates came and, um, and, and so it's kind of opened me up to even perceiving different ways of seeing her. And, uh, matter of fact, just today before we, we met here. Um, something else felt like it was totally unrelated, but it was like, I had this idea. Okay. So now I know that I have always had this ability to project. Now, if if you're in this field, you kind of have an idea of what that is. Like Mm -hmm. you're projecting thoughts into somebody else and that's very much involved in hypnosis. So the reason that it works, the reason hypnosis works is that your healer or whatever method you use, right? Your healer sees you as the complete being that you are. They see you as already healed. Okay. So as they're focusing on that, they're projecting that into your head and your being right. Or at least, okay. So, so I'm recognized. Okay. Yes. I, now I know I have that. I mean, not that I didn't know it, but I didn't know it completely. Now I know it completely. And then I'm thinking, Oh, and I'm actually noticing like there's some conflict in my house and I'm like, Ooh, you know, cause my husband said, this is the way I feel. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know why you would feel that way. Nobody's thinking. And then later as I'm thinking through it and about to talk to my kids about it, I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I was thinking that now I wasn't doing anything physically about that, but I was thinking that. So, and he's sensing that. Mm-hmm. So then I'm like, did I do that to my sister? And then I start to recognize, Oh, I've done that to anybody I've had like negative vibes with that I I don't know if it's like it's trying to figure out that give and receive like am I receiving mm-hmm. something or am I putting it out there and it gets very cloudy and so I'm noticing as I look back at that anybody that I had this intense connection with whether it was positive or negative they always wind up filling out filling out that role and it just goes and goes and goes and goes and the more I'm involved in it the more emotionally invested I am the more intense that is So I feel like it's, it's a, it's a give and take, but it's like, you can start to recognize your participation. And I guess is what I'm saying. 
Mm-hmm. You could open up that hurt and that feeling and you give yourself just a little bit of room, which I think is that pulling back, right? Like it's, it's, it's um, <clears throat> quieting the emotions that get in the way. So the anger, the frustration, you know, all of that stuff that comes forward as a result of that experience, if you can quiet that, and then you can really see it for what it is, which is I'm bringing this stuff up in you so you can figure out how to work with it. And then when you figure out how to work with it, then you're way more healed than you were before you even had that experience. Yes. And how empowering does that sound? Does that sound right? That you're bringing it up for, for like, for you to work with. Right. Because, you know, I mean, I like, I mean, truthfully, like we could go in and work with it, but we're not going to have the same attack. Like I hate to use the word attachment, but we're not going to have that same energy behind it than what the other person who, whose anger or whatever it is belongs to. Do you know what I mean? And how incredible is that? You say we, you mean the healer or do you mean? Sorry, I'm trying not to get the roles mixed up. So the healer themselves, right? Like, let's say that you're the client, right? So me as the healer, like, uh, yeah, like, you know, we like, truthfully, we really know how to move and manipulate energy, right? And we can do that in this process. Like if things start to get a little bit difficult, maybe we just kind of give it a little jab to kind of keep keep the momentum going, right? But truthfully, we're just really holding this energetic container for to for them to feel safe, for them to be able to respond or react however it is that they react. So let's say you as the client, right? You I instead of me going in and 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 going in and transmuting it and doing whatever it is, magical thing, right? <laughs> that, that we really, that, you know, I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes I'm like, I really want to do that. But <laughs> right? Yeah. Because it, because I could go in there and do that and help. I could probably help with that, but I will never untangle it in the way that you can because that energy truthfully is, is yours. And that's like, and that's a good thing in all honesty, it is yours. And you have the, you have the power, like you have that empowerment to go in and be like, no more. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, yeah. and really saying no more that it's done. So what I've, what I've witnessed is like, you know, cause uh, sometimes when, when I'm, when I've done this with people, they're kind of, they're confused. They're like, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand why I'm so frustrated right now. Right. <laughs> or truthfully, or they'll say, I don't know what we're doing, but this is you know, this is really agitating me. Well, the reason you don't know is because I'm going to go back to, it's kind of like in hypnosis, right? You go back to the subconscious. Well, you don't know because you're trying to make sense of it at a conscious level. Mm-hmm. When truthfully we're working in the subconscious and you don't have to know what it is, you know what I mean? Like truthfully. And then your, your subconscious is sitting there going like literally is like going do, 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 like reprocessing it. Right. Because it's realizing, well, wait a minute, this really isn't working. So it's like, I'm going to grab this resource. How does this resource work? Nope. This isn't the highest and best good. What about this resource? What about this resource? What about this resource? Right. So I feel like part of, part of that is like, even, so let's say that it's, let's say Blair, that you're like really angry, right? Cause you're like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I'm feeling this, what's happening. And to me, good, like, like use that energy behind that anger. I like, I'm not going to take it personally. I know that it's not about me. It's about whatever you're processing. And it's interesting to watch because as your subconscious untangles that knot, And then replaces it with a positive resource, that anger goes down, right? Mm -hmm. And then what happens is, is usually the next thing that happens is like, I, you know, there's that unconscious moment of like the smile that happens or like the giggle that happens, right? Because they realize that they processed it and you're like, what's going on? And you're, I don't know. But now all of a sudden I feel like I feel really, like I feel really good, right? So, for like, I could like truthfully, like, we can probably go in and do that whole process for them. But my question, I guess, my question would be like, how good would that good feel after you worked through all of that? Because I can see the anger, I can maybe feel the anger, but I'm not going to feel it in the in the intensity that you do, right? Right. 
And it's in that intensity where that really powerful healing energy work happens yeah. to be able to completely transmute it. And like, I don't, you know, I say throw it away, but, you know, untangle that knot that then, you know, when you, when you're done with it and you're on the other side, you're like, Ooh, like, and, um, and I, like, I don't know about you, but like when, when they get to that who part, <laughs> you know, where it's like, ah, oh, mm-hmm. I can feel it just release from their body. Yeah. And, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I do, I do different, different kinds of, you know, methods, you know, and mm-hmm. I think you've been doing this much longer than me. So even if I make, like, I probably did it when I was younger, but I wasn't aware of, you know, like I had no clue. So, um, I don't, I don't know that I, I, I think I, I know that I can see it in their body, but I think what I, what I see more is a conscious person communicating with me after that energy is shifted and you're kind of watching the way they they change but the conversation isn't quite to that place where the body has not gotten to and so the conversation usually unless the person's really aware and capable of being in the now moment in their physical body right like if they're really physically aware of energy and they can articulate it but even if they articulate that I find that most people are not able to translate the shift in energy in their body to what it's going to mean in a week, right? Like they can tell you how they feel differently, but how that actually applies doesn't usually. And I actually, I find that that happens with all the energy work is that you see a difference right then, or you might not, it's really irrelevant because it will still work, but it's the major shifts that happen afterward. Yes. Really are telling. Yeah. And I, I agree with that. So for me, like I can feel the release and a lot of times the person that's sitting in front of me, they're like, I'll ask them like, well, you know, like what happened? Right. Because you want, you, you want, you want to bring their focus. You do want to bring their focus back to that. Right. Because even when we talk about hypnosis, hypnosis is everything about attention where you put the attention, you know? So even when I ask them, well, what happened? A lot of them are like, (laughs) and I love it because it's just, it like, it's, there is like this really sense of joy, but they're like, I don't like, I don't know, but like, I do feel really good. And I feel like, like you as the healer, you're like, yes. And then you're like, well, wait until like a week, right? Yeah. <laughs> when, when you start actually going out in the r- real world, because you have, you know, the real yeah. world isn't kind a lot of times. And then you go back up against that and you don't even maybe like in the moment, you don't even realize that you make another choice. And then like an hour later, you're like, well, wait a minute. Like normally I would have acted like this, but this time I acted like this and it makes me, I'm like, I feel so much better about it. Yeah. I actually had a client who came back. I think it was last week. I hadn't seen her in over a year. And, um, she actually came in for two sessions. So she came in for hypnosis and she was worried about her daughter and she was trying to get her daughter to come in. And so she booked an appointment, but the daughter didn't wind up coming in. And so she came in for a session. And so we did another thing. And, um, and yes, it's been a year and, you know, I remember things, but sometimes there's a lot of stories and, you know, I don't remember. (laughs) So like she came back in and she, I said, so, you know, how, how have you been doing since you had your last session with me? And, and, um, essentially she articulated that, um, she could feel that what we're talking about, that there was a shift, but she, it didn't really play out yet, but like she was um, really blocked or con- congested about whether or not to sell her home somewhere else. And it was a huge block, like mentally, consciously, she just had it in every facet. Right. So we just did the work that we did and, and it wasn't, most of it wasn't even about that, but she said a month after our session, I just decided that I would, uh, put the house on the market. And she said, and with six, within six weeks, I had sold the house, completely moved out and moved into a new place here where I live near Bozeman. Right. And so that was like, I don't know, a, a day and a half or two days drive. And, and then all the other shifts that have happened since then, as a result, that, that, which is an articulation of exactly what you're describing. It's not, mm-hmm. the energy does shift inside. And yes, it does sometimes feel physical, but it's really more about once you've let that energy go, the stuff that feels congested, or maybe not even feels congested, it is congested. You just don't know it. Once you let that go, then it makes room for all these other decisions. Right. 
It just, it's, it's literally kind of just op- like everything just opens up. I love one of the things that you said was she came in and like, it, like, like truthfully, a lot of times what people come in with, come in with, right. Um, like I, like I listen to their story and I always think, yeah, like this, this is your conscious opinion of it. Right. right? <laughs> so I always love to get into that subconscious, like of going, well, what's really it. Right. And nine times out of 10, what they originally came with you, came to you with has nothing to do with what's, with what that root that's in there, that's planted, right. That you're, that you're helping them go in and pluck out. And so I always love, um, I love here, like, I, I hate to say, I love hearing their story, but I do love hearing their story yeah. about what they think it is. And they, and they'll tell you, well, you know, I really think it's this. So I probably need this. Right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what you need. Yeah. And you're like, you're kind of like, okay, okay, maybe. <laughs> and then when you get into it, the end result was like, had nothing to do with that. So then when you ask them, like, how do you feel about the original problem? They're like, like, well, it's almost like, well, what, like, what, what, I don't even remember what the original problem was. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So, and that, and that's also another indication of like, really like helping them find their way to make that transformation. Right. And then I, and then, and then just like you said, you know, once that happens, like, like once that shift happens, then the real, I, I, you know, the real integration of that work reveals itself when, you know, when they go out into the real world and they experience life differently than what they were before. And they realize, well, wait a minute, and I love that you said decisions because then it does, it opens up, uh, opens up like infinite choice, right? That we have, that we didn't believe that we had before. Exactly. Not that it wasn't there, but we weren't open enough to be able to, yeah. Yeah. Cause you got all this junk in the way, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 You gotta I, get like, you gotta clean out the closet. <laughs> yeah. I think we as healers can one, I know, whatever percentage, like a gazillion percent identify with the anger and the frustration or whatever these emotions are that get in the way, because if we're healers, we had to heal ourselves, right? Like yes. we're all still in the process of that. So it's not like we're in any different boat than anybody else who comes. But. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, like when you come in, when you come in to see me and I, I'm like, I'm telling you, oh, I, I understand. <laughs> I really do understand. Man, if I could tell you what I've had to heal, you'd be like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, no but, kidding. But it's true, right? Because we have to, we have to go through that. Because how can you help somebody if you, number one, if you, if you've done nothing to heal yourself, to really help that, help them and guide them to see that on the other side of it, like there's no words to describe that. Like it's, it like, it's truly amazing. Once once you get past, like once you get past that, and then you know you just patiently wait for the next one to come. Um, and then, and then again, you, at least when the next one comes, you remember how amazing, how hard it was, but how amazing it was when you made it out the other side. So now you're more, even more ready to meet this next thing. Right. Right. So what you're describing, I would say gives people who are called healers, the confidence that when their client comes in, they know they've already, they're already seeing the person healed. Like they're seeing the person complete and these issues that they're talking about are gone, right? So we're pulling that from our own personal experience because we've gone through this, we've healed these things, we've seen exactly what you're talking about. But the the beauty about it is, is that it's it really is available to everybody. And so in a, in a sense, we're also, by facilitating that healing, especially when a healer doesn't egoically identify with their success, right? Like, if they acknowledge that it's something that the other per- the person coming in is doing that, then that person receiving it, if they can understand that, they can really start to recognize, oh, I have it within me mm-hmm. to be able to do that healing on my own. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, so I maybe we can talk about this next time, but for a little while here, what we say in the last couple of weeks, I've had, um, I would say, I would say part of the downloads that I'm getting is this amazing intricacy between all the parts of my life and how they all go together. So like I'm working on one 
thing. Let's, I'm just going to pick one thing to make it easy. I'm working okay. on one thing. Um, I'm working, I'm developing a business relationship with somebody. And I know that that person, cause I've known them for a while. I know that that person has some of the similar, some similar issues as me, but it's a different flavor, right? Like, mm-hmm. so I know that working with her is going to trigger some stuff in me to cause me to work on it, which is then going to cause her to work on her stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then like, it, and then even with clients, it's like, I, I told the last several of them, I was like, you know what? I just love it when these people come in to see me because I know that when the next round of people comes in, that I've done the work because when I just finished my work, then all of a sudden somebody comes in and they're ready to work on something that's connected to what I'm just working on. Yes. And it's just, it's, it's to me, it's like, I don't know how to describe it. It, it feels like if you were to see all the nerves in the body light up and just cue everywhere. That's what it feels like. Cause it's like, okay, I'm working on this thing, but Oh, it's all, and it's all over all at the same time. Yes. I, so I love that. I love that you say that because I, first of all, I think that's amazing that that happens. Right. Because, you know, I think what we think too, is when we're going through all that stuff that it's definitely preparing us to help someone else. Right. But What's amazing, I think it just shows that when, and I think this goes for everybody, that when we heal ourselves, it then really does ripple out, right? So I'm going to, now I'm rippling out to, you know, all of these clients that need help with what I just did. And then what happens, right? They heal and then it ripples out because I don't know about you, but I've had clients where they've like come in with an issue. We, we work on it. We heal it. And then the next time you see them, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, my daughter, my daughter was going through the same thing so I could help her. Right. And I love hearing that. Cause I'm like, yes, like that's what healing is. Like we are all connected to the same web, like this very beautiful, intricate crystalline web. So when I'm doing this healing and then it goes out, it is literally going out to everyone, like whether, whether they're needing that healing at that moment or not, like we all have, we all have the same crap just in a different way. Yeah. Right. It all boils down to the same thing all the time. It's just, we're experiencing it in a different way. And I think that's, I think that's amazing. You're so funny because I pick out people that I'm like, I know that I'm going to get triggered. (laughs) great. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> like I'm going to hate it when it's happening, but this is going to be great because, you know, I, like, I can, like, I can heal that. And then I can use that to help the next person who, you know, for a fact, like a week later is going to come to you and you're going to be like, I just healed that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it is. It is it, I mean, it's beautiful. I wish I could like create an image like at first I thought well I should write something about this and I started writing and I was like well that's a lot of words and it's really complex and you know so I kind of stopped there so I don't know where this is going to come out but somehow that's going to come out I think that to try I want to share that with people you know yeah because it's of it's that yeah it's a huge deal I've done that where I had things and I'm like I'm gonna write about this and then I look at it and I'm like to almost like 10 pages later. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, can I condense this? And I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, was I going to say something about that? Oh, I was going to say that, that what we were just talking about where you're healing yourself and it gives a ripple effect. Okay. That's the shortened version of it, but that's the reason I truly believe that our planet is going to be okay because more yeah. people are doing this stuff. It's like, not. it's not just the healing stuff, but it's like um, the fact that the, the young, the youth have a different way of processing the world and they're refining their values. So maybe they don't value what the baby boomers valued, but they value something that the baby boomers valued, right? So that something that they're actually valuing is something that's worth keeping, right? Yes, yeah. And so, and, and so, the more in tune they are with themselves and the more that their parents heal and their, their grandparents heal. Hang on. Sure. <laughs> Doesn't usually bark. Um, the more that everybody heals, we wind up going. So, you know, there's a lot of people who will, I mean, if you watch the news, it's terrible, right? Like it just right. sounds horrible, but there is potential for actually not only healing ourselves, but healing the planet, solving all of these issues you know, 
politically and, and um, whatever you call it, technology or whatever, resources wise, all that kind of stuff. There's a way to solve that. We may not have the the space for it in our minds right now, but it's right there. Yes. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Like, you know, so like my son's grandmother calls me all the time to tell me how awful. Oh. Did I lose you? Uh, no, that's all right. My daughter's Bluetooth hooked up. We oh. have a little bit of technical issues. <laughs> So my son's grandmother calls me all the time to tell me how horrible, like everything is. Right. And I, and like, I really like, and she only talks to me for so long because I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't fall into that Mm -hmm. because I have that view too. Like, like there, like not only is there a lot of us now doing that, but like people are really waking up and they're seeking out other, like they're seeking out other healers for just help and guidance. And how cool is that to like help another person find their own empowerment to, you know, to, to help with that. And so I don't have like, yes, there's a lot of bad things that are going out there. There are moments where I'm like, uh, but at the same time, I'm like, we have to bring them up, right? It's the same thing. We've got to bring them up. So we know what it is that, that we're like, we're all supposed to heal. Yeah. So, um, I have, I don't know how this is going to evolve yet because, you know, during like my three hour download, this morning, the other thing that I kept hearing was, um, was, um, you don't have to be woo to experience the woo. Well, okay, hold on. You don't have to be what? Woo. You know, like, you know, everybody, they, they say what we do uh-huh. is woo stuff, right? <laughs> But I like, I kept hearing that. And I'm like, I'm like, what, like, what is that? Like, what, like, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. But like, I mean, I do have an idea, right? Like, you don't have to be, you don't have to be like, I'm a healer. I'm an intuitive. I'm this, but you're down. It's damn well sure that you're experiencing. Well, I'm going to share, I'm going to share with you two things. Okay. Okay. These are very specific. Um, I'm going to start with the most recent one. So my husband came, we were, we're having an argument. We're having communication. It's just, we just got married. (laughs) Um, so he came to me and said that he feels like he can't do anything right now. I've got two kids. So it's the three of us who've come into his house and he's got a daughter who's here part of the time. So he says, I, I don't feel like I can do anything right. And my ego self had a response to him and we're talking about the logistics of the thing, but doing this work, we know this is not really the logistics of it is not really what the issue is. Right. I'm, I'm like processing with that and I'm thinking, okay, well, I certainly didn't mean that. And then as I, because I'm, um, I'm, I am becoming more aware of my spiritual abilities is the bottom line, right. That, that are coming out and then of course, as a mother, I'm like, oh, my kids need to know about this. Like they, I need to tell them so that they're aware so that if they had, cause I know that my son has some of the things that I, that I can do. And I don't know about all of it, but so I'm, I'm actually messaging, trying to communicate with my kids about this. And as I'm doing that, the process comes through and I realize, oh, you know, I was doing that. I was Maybe I was thinking something to the effect of that you're wrong about this husband, right? But I know that my kids were because they had shared it with me. So, and that's where it started. I was like, okay, well, we need to talk about this because he's sensing that. And I know that you have thought that, and this is an issue because I know this is something that I can do. And then as I write it, I'm like, oh, I'm doing the same thing. I didn't realize it. Well, so again, it's a person who triggers that comes forward, right? So, um, you, what were we just talking about? I've lost it. Um, the, the phrase was, you don't have to be woo to experience okay. the woo. Okay. So my husband is not woo at all. Okay. As a matter of fact, um, I was doing a, a dream study session with somebody and she was telling me what my dreams were telling me, which was, I need to, um, really genuinely rest more. And by that, um, I mean, like, I'm, I have always been somebody who's go, 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 because that was instilled in me as a child. So go, 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 do, 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 do more, do, do more. Okay. Well, so I'm not resting. I'm not, and I know I'm not resting because two of the biggest, one of the biggest things I have difficulty with is sleeping, like (laughs) (laughs) a fundamental thing, right? I I totally relate to that. (laughs) So, 
so anyways, her answer was, you know, it's your higher self is telling you that you really need to genuinely rest. You need to nourish yourself. You need to do all this self-care stuff. And I, and I'm laughing because I'm like, okay, like if my husband was sitting in the room, he would say, well, so what are you going to do? Just lay around and do nothing, you know, like, <laughs> because he's actually said that because I had a healer who told me after my mom died, you need to not, you need to do this kind of stuff specifically. Right. Which for an outsider translates as you're not doing anything you don't want to do. Yeah. Okay. Well, so for a week I didn't do that. And so he was all, well, what about this appointment? And what about it? I said, no, my higher self sent to like I got told don't do anything for a week. And I thought my mother just died. Maybe you'll take that. My mother just died. I'm going to take a week to myself. Right. So there wasn't any really pushback after I said that, but um, anyway, so that's one. So he's experiencing it. And, and he's also experiencing it in the sense that he's telling me that he feels like he is doing everything he does is wrong. Right. Okay. Well, that is in fact, what my children have come to the conclusion. They, through the interactions, they felt like what they were doing wrong. So then now they're starting to think about, well, what's he doing is wrong. So they're, they are kind of projecting it. Right. And so yeah. he's receiving it, but he doesn't know that he's receiving it because he doesn't know about any of this stuff. Right. Like right. <laughs> having this conversation. So that's one that you, he's literally receiving it and actually responding to it because he feels like he can't do anything right. So therefore he changes his behavior. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that one was long and complicated, but the other one I'm going to share is I've, I've done it. I've said it so many times. It's pretty quick. Um, the first time I received Reiki, I had chemical burns on my hand and I have this in a blog on my website, but I had chemical burns on my hands in college. I didn't notice that I, I didn't know I was going to have it. I go into class, they're all swollen and red. And I'm like, Ooh, yuck. Ooh. Then all my friends are like, Oh my gosh, your hands. And they start flipping out. I'm like, could you just quit? Cause I can't do anything about it. I didn't know what to do about it. And we have class. So just leave it. And they quit. And then this lady who was um, actually, I would love to get in contact with her. her I don't remember. Her, I think her first name was Mary um, Frank. She was married to the guy who was the photography and the ceramics teacher. And she was fun. She was older. She was like late fifties, right? For, so for a 20 year old, that's like really old. Yeah. You're like, well, you're so old. <laughs> <laughs> so she's in the class. She hears this whole conversation. I noticed that she was looking at me and part of it was, I was kind of like in a way rolling my eyes at my friends. Cause I was like, just drop it. I can't do anything about it. I don't want to keep talking about it. And uh, so we sat with the teacher who was doing a demonstration. It was watercolor class. And she sits next to me and she just looks at me and smiles and she's really nice. And she puts her hands on mine and I just smiled at her and, you know, he had already started the the demonstration and she probably knew, you know, like I, I wasn't gonna, I'm not gonna interrupt the thing to say, why are you holding my hands? I didn't really. Right. Care. <laughs> so she did her thing. And then when we got up, she just like squeezed my hands and she smiled at me and that was it. So like, we didn't have a conversation about it. Okay. I thought as the day went through, I started recognizing more what was going on with my hands. And I'm like, oh man, it's taking so long to burn. It's got to finish burning and then it's got to start healing. Oh, so downtrodden, right? right? I go to bed. So by the time I go to bed, I'm like, it's going to take like three weeks for this stuff to be over. I don't know what other ramifications are going to come out, but I know it's going to get worse. And so I went to bed, I woke up. And they were like 70, maybe 70% healed. And I was like, whoa, I don't know what that was. And I didn't have class the next day. So the following day, the first thing I did when I walked in is I went over to her and said, hey, what'd you do to my hands? (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, like I didn't have any, like I didn't have any opinion about it. I didn't have any thoughts about it. It She just did the work and it did help immensely. And so since then, I just know that Reiki does work. I mean, it took me, shoot, that was like, uh, probably that took me 20 years before I went and took a Reiki class, but I still took a Reiki class and I didn't have any doubt about whether it was going to work because I know, I know it's going to work. Right. Yeah. So you can experience the woo without, what did you say? I, it's, what did I, what was the expression, expression, um, or you don't have to be woo to experience the woo. Yeah. 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 Well, and you know, and when I sat down and I thought about it and I was like, well, everybody experiences the woo. So a good example is right. I worked in public safety 
and men, like it, it was always public safety and mental health, you know, switching back and forth. And now like I do crisis work, which is mental health working with public safety, like <laughs> first responders. So, um, you know, one of the things like when you, at, when you talk to like first responders, they're like, they think like, they think you're out of your mind doing this stuff. Right. <laughs> and, and like, I always tell them, I'm like, well, I'm like, you're psychic too. Like you're intuitive. And they're like, no, I'm not like, that's bullshit. Right. <laughs> because they will not admit it. And, you know, and I'm like, I worked on public safety. I used, and even at first, like not even knowing, like I used my intuitive sense. Mm-hmm. Right. So I always use the example. I'm like, okay. I said, so you go to this house and I said, what's the first thing that you do when you go to the house? And they're like, well, you know, you get like, you get that like first impression of it. Like you, you go in, go in, like listening to what your gut is saying to you. <laughs> and I'm all really, you listen to what your gut says to you. And I said, and if your gut says, no, don't, don't go in by yourself. I need to call back up. Do you do it? And they're like, well, of course I do. And of course they're like, <laughs> it's to keep me safe. And I said, so then that gut feeling you're getting, I said, is your intuitive sense telling you if I walked in here, I could die. I need, I, you know, I need backup. And then they kind of stop and they're like, <laughs> and I'm like, you use it. I'm like, you yeah. use it all the time. I'm all, it's just like when you're, you know, when you're driving down the street and you, and you see someone and you're going, well, I should probably just stop and, and have a conversation with this person. And then you find out that, you know, two doors down, they committed like this huge crime. Mm-hmm. How would you know to stop and talk to that particular person? Mm-hmm. And then they always say, well, you know, it's gut sense. Well, yeah, your gut sense is your intuitive ability, right? So you don't have to be woo to experience the woo, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just so interesting. Yeah. So I don't know where this is going to go, but I think it's really good. I think it's, I feel like it's a really good informative piece to let people know that like, like, you know, the difference between me and you is I outwardly say like, this is who I am. This is what I do. I said, you just don't, but we're both experiencing the woo, right? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. I don't, like I said, I don't know where it's going, but it'll be interesting. (laughs) Yeah. I really like that idea. And I've actually thought that I actually thought that about my husband because I was, you know, talking to all my woo people, right? Like all my friends and things. And I'm like, you know, I wonder if it's blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the, the more, um, seasoned ones will say, you know, on a higher level, da, 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 they, he knows. Okay. But what I'm experiencing as I'm now married to him is it really is that way. I mean, I do see people, I see his daughter, I see him, I see all kinds of people. They do, they do have responses like that. And sometimes like, it doesn't make any logical sense as to why they would do something, but they're still doing it. And they're having a response to it. They don't know why they're having a response. They don't know what it is, but it, they have one and it's very clear. Right? <laughs> yeah. Send inquiries, suggestions for new discussion topics and comments to podcast at happylioncenter.com. That's podcast at happylioncenter.com. If you found this content enjoyable or helpful, please comment, like, share, and download. Donations are appreciated and help us to produce more of similar content. Consider making a contribution at the links in the description box. Your support is greatly appreciated. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the Happy Lion Center and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything. None of the content provided should be considered a substitute for legal, financial, medical, psychiatric advice, or as care from a certified professional.